jbeans.net. Aruba is a small island country located in the southern Caribbean Sea, north of Venezuela. We've cruised to Aruba multiple times, and in this video, we'll give an overview of our return visit to the island in August 2024. During the visit, our ship, the Carnival Celebration, docked in the capital city of Aranyastat, and we rented a car to explore the island. Just a quick note that if you enjoy this video, please give us a thumbs up or leave a comment. It really helps our channel. And consider subscribing so you get alerted when we add new videos. Prior to our cruise, we booked a rental car with a local company for $65 US total for the day. We also downloaded the free Organic Maps mobile app and the apps offline maps for Aruba, Bonaire, and Curaçao. The offline maps provided detailed navigation tools and turn-by-turn -turn directions, even without an internet connection. On the day of our visit, we met the rental car representative just outside the cruise port area and were soon on our way. Our first destination was the Phillips Animal Garden, but we had a couple of quick stops to make along the way. Our first quick stop was Super Food Plaza, which was located about 10 minutes north of the cruise port area. We stopped there to grab a quick bite from the traditional coin-operated Dutch snack wall located outside the store. The snack wall was filled with food from the store's restaurant, Jack's Cafe. Most of the snacks only cost a couple of Aruban florins, and we were able to easily get florins as change from the grocery store. The exchange rate during our visit was a bit less than two florins for every US dollar. We purchased a single pistachi from the snack wall because we had a couple more food stops planned for our day, and we didn't want to fill up at the first one. Unfortunately, the pistachi we got was burnt, so we took it inside to the cafe, and the workers happily replaced it with a fresh one. We all thought the pistachi tasted okay, but it wasn't nearly as tasty as the pistachi we had at our next quick stop. After leaving Superfood Plaza, we drove about 10 minutes east to Moco Snack Corner, which was selling a variety of snack foods from a very small structure located on the side of the road. During our visit, Moco Snack Corner had a selection of sandwiches for about six Aruban florins, or roughly three US dollars, and a selection of pistachis for 250 Aruban florins, or a bit less than 150 US. Just like our previous stop, we bought a single pistachi with ham and cheese filling, and we all thought it was delicious. In fact, we enjoyed the pistachi so much that we've added Moco Snack Corner as a place to revisit during future cruises to Aruba. From Moco Snack Corner, we drove about 10 minutes north to Phillips Animal Garden. If you decide to follow our adventure in Aruba, we highly recommend sticking to the paved roads for the drive to the Animal Garden. The unpaved roads between the two locations were a bit rougher and more confusing than we preferred. Entry to the Animal Garden cost 10 US dollars for visitors 14 years and up, and five US dollars for visitors age three to 13. Children under three were free. Each admission included a cup of pellets to feed the animals inside. The Phillips Animal Garden is a nonprofit organization that was founded in 2009. The organization's mission focuses on rescuing and rehabilitating animals. And during our visit, we saw donkeys, 
Ostriches. Deer. Goats. And more. After spending some time feeding and taking photos with the animals, we washed our hands at the station located near the entrance and drove to our next destination, the Alto Vista Chapel. The chapel was located about a five minute drive north of the animal garden. The current structure was built in 1952 at the same location as the original church that was built in 1750. Behind the church, the Peace Labyrinth was a fun little adventure for our jelly bean, even if it was more of a winding path than an actual maze. Leaving the chapel, we drove about 10 minutes west to Linda's Dutch Pancakes for some lunch. We arrived a little before noon and the restaurant wasn't too busy, so we easily got a table in the outdoor seating area. The area was completely shaded with quite a few fans to keep us comfortable from the midday heat. Like a previous visit to Aruba, we ordered a bacon and cheese savory pancake and a Nutella sweet pancake. We also ordered a Dutch pressed coffee. Our food arrived about 15 minutes after we ordered, and we all agreed that Linda's pancakes were the best Dutch pancakes we've ever tasted. And my coffee, which was delivered with a Hershey's Kiss to add in, was delicious. Like Moco Snack Corner, everything was so good that we've added Linda's Dutch pancakes as a place to revisit during future cruises to Aruba. The total cost for our meal before tip was $25.50 US. As a bonus, our server surprised our jelly bean with a ring pop to enjoy after the meal. And they also gave us some tasty and powerful snow mints. It's worth noting that the restaurant had restrooms and a gift shop available near the entrance. Our jelly bean purchased a souvenir hoodie from the gift shop for significantly cheaper than we found the same hoodie at the cruise port area. On top of that, we also received a discount since we dined at the restaurant. Following our meal, we drove about 10 minutes southwest back to Superfood Plaza to purchase some Dutch treats to try with friends and family back home. Like our trips to the grocery stores in Bonaire and Curaçao, we really enjoyed walking through the aisles to find items we identified prior to our cruise. Also like those other visits, all the employees were super helpful with any questions we had. In total, we spent about $65 US for our purchase, including some snow mitts, thanks to our visit to Linda's Dutch Pancakes as well as some carrots to feed the donkeys we are planning to visit a bit later. From Superfood Plaza, we drove about five minutes southeast to Royal Aruba Aloe, where we visited the aloe farm, as well as a store, museum, and factory. After spending some time checking out the many rows of aloe plants, we headed inside the main building and visited the store, which had many aloe-based products available, such as soaps, lotions, body scrubs, and more. Tours of Royal Aruba Aloe were also available inside the main building. The tours walked visitors through information about the aloe vera plants and their many uses, as well as the history of the aloe plant and the company. Upstairs, the tours continued past windows where visitors could view the live production of aloe-based products in the factory below. Unfortunately, we were not allowed to take photos or videos of the production, but it was still interesting to see. At the end of the tour, a few Aruba aloe sampler products were available for visitors to try. Complimentary guided tours were available every 15 minutes during our visit. 
and visitors could also opt for a self-guided tour. After wrapping up our visit to Royal Aruba Aloe, we drove about 20 minutes southeast to Donkey Sanctuary Aruba, which was our final stop for the day. The sanctuary was founded in 1997 with a mission to save the donkeys of Aruba and moved to its current location in 2016. The site is home to over 100 donkeys and is run by volunteers. While admission to the sanctuary was free, donations were greatly appreciated. We spent some time feeding the donkeys with the carrots we purchased at Super Food Plaza. And our jelly bean loved the experience. We then entered the enclosed area and walked to the nearby Visitor Pavilion. The Visitor Pavilion had several amenities available for guests, including cups of feed available for purchase, in case you didn't bring some apples or carrots with you. A hand-washing station for after feeding and petting the donkeys. Some shaded seating for relaxing and watching others interact with the donkeys and a small shop for purchasing souvenirs. When we were done, we left Donkey Sanctuary Aruba and drove about 15 minutes northwest back to the cruise port area. We then fueled up our rental car and returned it about seven hours after we first picked it up. If you're interested in more information about our rental car adventure in Aruba, We've linked to some sites we found useful for planning in the description below.